everyone, welcome to Prime Strings and the Learn to Play Suzuki Violin in 30 Days course. I am Henriette and today is day 15 and I'm so excited because today we will be learning Perpetual Motion which is one of my favourite pieces. And by the end of the lesson you should know how to play Perpetual Motion with a beautiful sound and you will also have learned how to structure this piece properly to make performing it easier. So if you've not already done so, please can I ask you to subscribe to the channel so that we can keep these videos coming for free. Thank you. So let's get started. I'll play you the tuning notes first. Here is your A. scale. I'll play each note of the scale twice with long bows and I'll count us in for four. One, two, three, four. as well. In the arpeggio I play each note only once with long bows but we play the whole arpeggio over twice. One, two, three, four. in the book. We will be learning perpetual motion today. I'll play it for you first.
to play this piece, we will read the piece through first. This piece is, is in the key of A major and when you look at bars 1 and 2 you will find that these are very similar to the notes in the A major scale and you can literally imagine that the composer has put all the notes of the scale in a pot and then given it a good shake. So let's take a further look at bars 1 and 2 please. Each group of four notes begins on a note higher in the scale. So we're starting on A, then B, then C sharp and then D. And this gets repeated in bars 3 and 4. You get A, 1, 2, 3. Now from bar 5 onwards you will have noticed that the scale is coming down here. So now we're going to go 3, 2, 1, and then the zero comes here at the end. There's a little variation here. So three, two, one, and I would call it zero. It will greatly help your playing if you spot patterns like this. And it also will help your performance as most people's brains are wired to find such patterns helpful to understand the concepts. Now let's play this piece slowly from the beginning. And while you play, I would like you to focus on leaving your fingers down on the string when you play each finger. We have discussed earlier that as violinists we tend to play with more than one finger on the string wherever we can and this will help develop your feel of the fingerboard and it will in turn help you play better in tune in the long run. So we are going to slowly start and I would like you to use short bow strokes at the upper half of the bow. So let's place your bow in the middle of the bow on the A string before we begin and we will stop after two bars. Here we go, we'll go very very slowly. One, two, three, four. So while we're learning to play this song, I would also like you to learn the letter names of the notes while we're going along. So as you may know from an earlier lesson, letter names of the notes go like the alphabet, A, B and C and so on, until we get to the letter G. After the letter G, we're going to get back to the start of the alphabet, so letter A. So here we go. So let's go ahead and read out the letter names from the beginning. So here we go. A, B, C sharp, C sharp, B, C sharp, D, D, C sharp, D, E, C sharp, D, B, E, E. So now let's find bar 5, which is in the second line of your music, right here. So here we start on three fingers on the E string and we're going to get down the scale, although not quite in one go. So we're going to go 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, E, E, 1, E, 3 on A, 3 on A, 2 on A, 1 on A, E, E. So now let's play this section from bar 5 onwards. Before we can start to play 3 on E, we will first need to find the note. So we will need to play E, 1, 2, 3 and test the third finger with the A string as we have done in previous lessons. E, 1, When this third finger matches the open A string, you're ready to start, so make sure you leave your fingers down on the string. So here we go at bar five. One, two, three, 
four. Stop and find that third finger again. And that before I went to three fingers on the A string I just paused for a moment to get all my fingers in place before I started playing. You may have noticed so far that we play short sections of this piece rather than playing the whole piece through in one go. I do that deliberately for two reasons. First, this piece consists of several sections which are the same or very nearly the same so when we practice we can practice a section once and then benefit from it twice and I like that a lot. Secondly, this is the way to build stamina. You practice short, short sections before you put it all together at the end of a lesson. So you will find that as we go through this course the sections that we play will increase in length just to allow you to build stamina. Now there is a new section in this piece which we have not yet practiced before. Please take a look at bar 9 at the end of line 3. So we will just read bar 9 through and the fingers are going to be 2, A, 1, 1, 3, 1, 2, 2, 4, 2, 3, E, 1, 2, three, three, and this is where we'll stop. So now let's play bars nine and ten, and we're starting on the second finger, so you will need to test that finger first by playing A, one, two. I'll show you. And when all your fingers are ready to play, you can start, and I'll count us in for four, one, two, three, four, Shall we just practice this same section again, bars nine and ten? Because this is a bit more complicated. After four, I've still got my second finger on the string by the way. I'm starting in the middle of the bow. One, two, three, four. that when I played the second finger my other fingers aren't here but they are hovering above the string so I suggest we play this same section bars 9 and 10 once more where you can concentrate on holding your other fingers so the ones that you don't use hovering over the string after four here's bar nine for you one two three four technique now. Now we've nearly covered all there is to this piece. So now we're going to put all things together. 
we will play four bars at a time and if you find that easier you may write in a little comma after four bars so you know where to stop and take a break. I have done that in my part two and I will show you. So I've put a little line here after four bars, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so I've put my second line there, one, two, three, four, I've got my next line there and then I can finish it all off. So these are logical sections that you can break your piece into um, so that you can stop if you want to practice a section again. You may also hear from the music when it comes to a natural pause. And music is quite often structured in what we call four bar phrases. And when you learn to recognize where the phrases are, it will make your playing a lot easier. And more importantly, it will make your practicing a lot easier. So let's put the music on the music stand now and I'll count us in for four and we'll play four bars and then stop. So we're going to go back to the beginning now and we're going to play the whole piece through with little stops where we've put the little commas in the music and I want you to start in the middle of the bow on the A string and I want you to play every note up to the point and back so we use this area um, but as I've said in earlier videos it says that you need to play the staccato short and the staccato notes are indicated by the dots above your note but I don't want you to do that. I would like you to play the bows as smooth as you possibly can. So here we go. One, two, three, four. to get ready to play three fingers on the E string. Ready? And... Now get fingers one and two on the string, so we're playing. And here we go, ready? And. before you play the final line of the piece. Here we go. One and
managed to keep up with me that's absolutely awesome if you haven't that is what I expect to have happened so you're doing great but what you need to do next is find out the bars where you have got confused while we were playing and that's totally fine to be confused at this stage but what you want to do is go back perhaps to an earlier part of this video and sort out the bit where you didn't quite get it so you pick out the difficult sections and you work on those before you put it all back together again and that seems to be taking a little bit more time but actually in fact it is the most efficient way of practicing this piece so sort out your tricky sections and then put it together again now it may well be that once you've played this whole song together um, your arms feel quite tired which is quite normal at this stage in your playing so please join me in relaxing your arms and shoulders so put your violin and your bow down and roll your shoulders back and forth and swing your arms to get your blood flowing again. So, having put your violin down also gives us an opportunity to check over your bow hold. So it is a good idea to, every time when you play, spend a little bit of time perfecting your bow hold and your violin hold. So it, it is well worth checking at this stage that your thumb is bent underneath your bow and that your thumb is still in the correct corner right here. So I'm putting it right there. Your middle finger goes over and then your two middle fingers here are close together. You've got a space here and a space there and your pinky is on the side edge. You can see also that my wrist is fairly flat so I'm not playing with my wrist like that and neither am I playing with my wrist too high but we keep it fairly flat at this stage. So this is what a good bow hold looks like and you should gradually begin to find that a bit easier to hold this bow hold for longer periods of time. So now let's look at a good violin hold. So your violin should sit on your shoulder quite far towards your ear and your jaw here this pointy bit of your jaw should be on the chin rest so if you find yourself playing with your violin too far forward see if you can slide the violin over your collarbone towards the side a little bit more okay and now you may want to check that your violin is neither straight to the side nor is it further forward but it's right in the middle here between straight in front and straight to the side and your violin is neither too high up or too low down if you have a little ping pong ball imagine you put a little ping pong ball on here and you let go it should very slowly roll this way so it shouldn't roll fast this way when your violin is up too much neither should it roll the other way when your violin is too far down but imagine your ping pong ball is just gently rolling this way because you've got this gentle slope in your violin. Now, sideways, your violin should be just tilted slightly to the right hand side this way. If it's completely flat, you've got it too far that way. If it's on its side, it's not comfortable to play because your left elbow will be sticking out that way. So let's check the sideways tilt as well. Okay. Your finger line should be level with the E string. My wrist is straight here and my thumb is just lying there very loosely. It's not gripping the, the violin at all. Okay, it's just lying there loosely. Now, I see many violinists that play with their fingers way too low. So you see this ridge of knuckles has gone below the fingerboard here. So if that is you, then please see if you can get it hoisted up. And you, that will help if you bring your elbow a little bit further under. Okay, so there's lots of ideas there in one go. If you sort out one thing today, I should be incredibly happy. So you check it all over every time you play. But don't think you're going to fix everything in one go because this is just really mind-boggling and quite complicated. And there's lots of things to think about. So take it one step at a time. Sort out one thing, maybe today is a good day to check your elbows under the violin, for instance, or check your bow hold, and then tomorrow you look at something else. Now, for those of you who are on the roll today, let's play the whole song a little bit faster. Try to keep up if you can, but if this is too tricky, 
keep playing slowly. I would much prefer it if you played more slowly, but with a good posture and making a nice sound, than going too fast and making lots of mistakes. So only carry on now if you can keep up. If you find it too difficult to keep up at this stage, just play the video back and practice the individual sections again. And that will serve you really well at this stage in your learning. So I'll count us in for four. Let's get ready on the A string with your bow. One, two, three, four. <laughs> directions that are in the piece. So if you have a look at the start it has the word allegro there and allegro in Italian means fast. So fast is a relative thing it means fast for you for the individual player. So don't go faster than you can manage uh, but you can try it a little bit faster every day of course. And then also above the first note you see that little um, square thing there which means down bow and that means as we've discussed earlier that your bow goes in a downward direction so it goes from a higher point to the f in the direction of the floor but down bows as we've seen earlier they can be here but you can also play a down bow here you could even play a down bow here but in this piece as we've seen before we're going to start in the middle and then play down bow there that is the meaning of that little square thingy and then underneath your first note, it has the word mezzo forte, which we've seen earlier, means medium loud. Now, it's all very well that it says medium loud at the start, but the flow of the music has got little sections where it goes louder and other sections where it goes a little bit quieter. And music is always in flow, it's never static, so notes always go somewhere, gradually getting louder, usually when the notes go up, and getting a little bit quieter usually when the notes have got a downward trend so um, you can do what you like of course and that's the beauty of music is that you can interpret it in your own individual way but I think it's my job as your teacher to give you generalizations about how things usually are played so let's play it a bit faster this time so I'm going to get ready in the middle of the bow one two three four <laughs> practice and with perfecting perpetual motion.
If you have enjoyed this lesson, please share it with your friends. Please also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so I can update you as soon as a new lesson is released. And I'm already looking forward to seeing you in day 16, halfway through our course, where we will be learning the D scale and Allegretto. So I'm already excited about that lesson. I hope to see you there. Goodbye.